Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Al Safriya Palace yesterday evening the commander of the U.S. Central Command General Joseph Hotel, who is currently visiting the country. His Majesty welcomed the U.S. General, underlining the historic bilateral ties linking the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States, as well as the joint coordination and cooperation in various fields, especially in defense affairs and military coordination. His Majesty stressed that the Bahraini-U.S. relations have been characterized by long-term trust, mutual respect, and cooperation in all fields to serve the interest of both countries and people. The meeting also discussed regional and international developments as well as exchanging views on issues of common concern. His Majesty the King noted the pivotal role played by the United States in the protection of international peace and security and appreciated the efforts of General Joseph Vattel in promoting Bahraini-U.S. military and defense cooperation. The commander of the U.S. Central Command expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty's key and support for the bilateral relations between the two countries and praised these relations, especially in the field of defense and military cooperation. His Royal Highness Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict No. 14 for this year, restructuring the High Committee for Disabled Affairs under the chairmanship of the Labour and Social Development Minister with the membership of Sheikh Daij bin Khalifa Al Khalifa from the National Institute for the Disabled, Sheikh Aisha bin Ta'ali Al Khalifa from the Labour and Social Development Ministry, Badriya Yusuf Al Jeeb from the Labour and Social Development Ministry, Esmahan Yusuf Al Saud from the Labour and Social Development Ministry, Ahmed Jafar Al Haki from the Labour and Social Development Ministry, Mohammed Rashid Al Sawadi from the Foreign Affairs Ministry, Khalid Mahmoud Al Saidi from the Education Ministry, Naseem Ahmed Al Jabal from the Housing Ministry, Dr. Rahab Marzouk Al Marzouk from the Health Ministry, Engineer Ibrahim Yusuf Al Joder from the Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning Ministry, Engineer Abdul Hassan Ali Abdul Hassan from the Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning Ministry, Engineer Maha Khalifa Hamada from the Works Municipalities Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning Ministry, Dr. Dina Ahmed Abdullah from the Supreme Council for Women, Walid Ali Dawadi from the Information Affairs Ministry, Yusuf Ahmed Mohammed Ibrahim from the Civil Service Bureau, Nawar Abdullah Al-Mutawa from the Youth and Sports Ministry, Abdullah Bakar Hassan from Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Sheikh Mohammed bin Daij bin Khalifa Al Khalifa from the Bahrain Sports Federation for Disabilities, Jasim Mohammed Siadi from the Bahrain Association for Parents and Friends of Disabled and Adil Sultan al Mutawa from Bahrain Mobility International. The membership of the committee shall be two renewable years and the members of the committee shall be elected, including a vice chairman, at its first meeting. The Minister of Labour and Social Development and the ministers concerned are to implement the edict on the day of its issuance. The edict is to be issued in the official Gazette. His Royal Highness also issued Edict No. 15 for this year, establishing the National Spatial and Geographic Information Governance Committee under the chairmanship of the Informatics and Electronic Government Authority CEO and the membership of representatives from various government bodies. The membership of the committees shall be three renewable years. The committee is concerned with proposing national strategic policies and plans for the development of the spatial and geographical information sector and then submitting them to the Ministerial Committee for Urbanization and Infrastructure. It is also concerned with setting specifications and standards related to geographical spatial information. The authorities concerned are to implement the edict on the day following its issuance in the official Gazette. The Prime Minister also issued Edict No. 16 for this year, renewing the membership of several members in the General Directorate of National Qualifications Framework at the Education and Training Quality Authority. They are Soha Mohammed Al Kohaji from the Education Ministry, Dr. Muna Mohammed Al Blushi from the Higher Education Council. Jamal Abdul Aziz Al Alawi from the Civil Service Bureau and Dr. Basim Mohammed Al Hamad as member from government universities. The edict also appointed Ahmed Jafar Miftah from the Ministry of Labor and Social Development. The chairman of the general directorate is to implement the edict on the day of its issuance, and the edict is to be published in the official gazette. 
The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, patronized the closing ceremony for summer school clubs held today at Al Khansa Primary School for Girls. And Naimi affirmed that the summer school clubs project implemented by the ministry comes within the framework of its interest to implement various student activities that enhance curriculum contact and discover and refine students' talents as well as play an important role in instilling national and human values. The minister added that that sports, artistic and cultural students' activities have contributed in the good results achieved by the citizenship. Human Rights Support Schools Project, the most prominent among these, is the decrease of behavioral irregularities among students, which encouraged the ministry to disseminate this project in the new school year to all schools. The minister toured the ceremony's exhibition, which featured the students' artwork throughout their participation in the clubs, which are disputed over the Kingdom's governorates. The minister honored the outstanding students in the summer club's activities and the employees as well as the cooperating bodies with the ministry in this field, praising their efforts in the success of the summer activities for this year. The Minister of Information Affairs Ali bin Mohammed Ramehi met with chief editors and columnists of local newspapers today at the ministry. During the meeting, the minister affirmed that the efforts made by Bahraini media represent its entrusted role in responding to allegations, lies and fabricated reports that some media are falsely accusing the kingdom. He expressed his sincere gratitude to journalists and media personnel in Bahrain who have demonstrated important lessons in patriotism and exhibited their keenness of Gulf and Arab unity. Ramehi hailed the national role carried out by the Bahraini media in defending homeland and Arab causes with utmost professionalism, emphasizing his pride of the people of Qatar, citing them as a main pillar in the GCC's social system. He also underscored that national media institutions are not in any way or form targeting our brothers, the Qatari people, but are aimed at the Qatari policy which supports terrorism as well as in response to the false allegations of the Qatari media, most notably Al Jazeera News Channel, that promotes under false pretenses freedom of speech. He noted that some Qatari media has tried and still tries to exploit the current crisis in order to drift the people of the council apart and portray the situation as being directed at the people of Qatar. He went on to state this kind of malicious media has ignored the keenness of the leadership regarding the security stability and interests of the Badli Qatari people, which was confirmed by the issuance of the royal order to facilitate and take into account the cases of the common families and humanitarian situations. Aramehi concluded the meeting by asserting that the Bahraini values are what made Bahrain an example of freedom, tolerance, coexistence and acceptance of others, adding that the kingdom is proud to be part of the Gulf and Arab nations and contributes effectively to the global humanitarian message. In line with the security efforts to combat terrorism and ensure the public safety for all citizens and residents, the search and investigation resulted in revealing a terror cell composed of 10 people, seven of which have been arrested. Within the security frameworks of combating terrorism and maintaining public safety for citizens and residents, search and investigation resulted in revealing a terror cell composed of 10 people, led by Hussein Ali Ahmed Dawood, 31 years old, who is one of Sarai Al Ashtar or Al Ashtar Bridges leaders, that is the terror arm of Al Wafa Islamic movement. His citizenship was stripped, fugitive to Iran, and is sentenced for life imprisonment in three terror cases, as well as 15 years imprisonment in another verdict. In addition to his involvement in several terror cells and planning to execute terror crimes that led to the martyrdom of several police officers, he runs several terror cells and is closely related to Iran's Revolutionary Guards and Murtada Sindhi. Seven have been arrested in relation to this terror cell, which include Hassan Maki Abbas Hassan, 27 years old, worker. 
He is connected to Hussein Ali Ahmed Dawood and is considered the main arrested individual. He is in charge of manufacturing explosive devices for al ashtar bridges, including the devices seized in a raid on March 13th of this year. He received instructions from Hussein Ali Ahmed Dawood to continue his explosive manufacturing activity in addition to storing smuggled materials and establishing a storehouse for that purpose. He is involved in cases of manufacturing and possession of explosive devices and has taken part in operations of transferring and manufacturing explosives since 2013 after he received theoretical and practical training. Mahmoud Muhammad Ali Mullah Salim Al Bahrani, 33 years old, Arabic language teacher. He trained the main arrested individual, Hassan Maki Abbas, on manufacturing explosive devices and received a bag from him that contained a Kalashnikov rifle, as well as explosive material that he kept for a while and returned. He was arrested upon his arrival from Lebanon. Zainab Maki Abbas, 34 years old, she hid at her place of residence in El Malkia bags that contain explosive materials and a Kalashnikov rifle that belongs to her brother Hassan before his arrest. She then asked her husband, Amin Habib, to transfer the bags home. Amin Habib Ali Jassim, 32 years old, employee. He transferred the bags that contained explosive materials and a Kalashnikov rifle that he took from his wife and then delivered it to Hussein Muhammad Hussein Khamis to hide them. Hussein Muhammad Hussein Khamis, 39 years old, driver. He hid the bags that contained explosive materials and a Kalashnikov at his residence in Dar Klaib area. Hassan Atiyah Muhammad Saleh, 37 years old, driver. He purchased some materials used in explosive manufacturing, which include metal balls and prepared gas cylinders to be used in bombing operations after assigned by Hassan Maki Abbas. Hassan Ibrahim Muhammad Hassan Leif, 27 years old, worker. He was recruited by Hassan Maki Abbas. He received and transferred some materials used in explosive manufacturing from several areas, including Kerzakan and Demistan, and he temporarily stored some of them at his house. Meanwhile, search and investigation continues to arrest the terrorist elements, who are still at large, which are Sayyid Hadi Hassan Majid Rali, 26 years old, driver, he is convicted and wanted for terror cases, including using explosive materials to endanger people's lives, attempted murder, arson, manufacture and possession of explosive devices for terrorist purposes. Sadiq Muhammad Abdul Rasul Darwish, 25 years old, driver. He is convicted and wanted for terror cases, including arson, manufacturing and possession of explosive devices, endangering public means of transport and communication and vandalism. Search, investigation and information collection are also resulted in seizing quantities of explosive materials in various sites in Demistan, Karzakan, Al Malkia and Dar Klaib, which are used as workshops to manufacture bombs and store explosive materials in populated areas. After notifying the public prosecution and taking all security and legal procedures, the teams of forensic evidence went to these sites to conduct technical inspections and seizures due to the destructive nature of the materials in order to transfer them to safe locations. These sites were prepared to manufacture and store explosive devices. Also, Large quantities of highly explosive materials were found, which exceed 127 kilograms, including more than 24 kilograms of C4, TATP, and nitrocelluloids, in addition to several ready explosive devices, an automatic weapon, and other local made weapons, as well as tasers, hand grenades, and quantities of live ammunition.
وكميات من الذخائر الحية The General Directorate of Investigation and Criminal Evidence has taken the legal procedure and referred the case to the public prosecution. Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Minister of Defense Prince Mohammed bin Salma bin Abdulaziz patronized the annual ceremony to review the Hajj security forces and the agencies involved in Hajj affairs participating in the implementation of the general plan for the Hajj season this year. Parades of the Hajj security forces took place and an anti-terrorism drill was presented by the Special Emergency Forces. The Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Supreme Hajj Committee, Prince Abdulaziz, bin Saud bin Naif bin Abdul Aziz delivered a speech in which he expressed his thanks and appreciation for the Crown Prince's patronage of this occasion and highlighted the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's service of pilgrims. The fifth pillar of Islam is to make a pilgrimage or Hajj to Mecca in Saudi Arabia at least once in one's lifetime. Saudi Arabia, like every year, will host a thousand family members of Palestinians for Hajj among over two million other Muslims. More in the following story with Heba Assam. The Hajj is the ultimate form of worship as it involves the spirit of all other rituals and demands of the believer great sacrifice. On this unique occasion, nearly two million Muslims from all over the world meet in Mecca. This year, the Saudi Ministry of Hajj granted the 1,000 new Palestinian pilgrims to the previous ones of 6,600 from the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. Our message to our Palestinian pilgrims this year is to have a balanced and positive attitude, to be messengers of good words to their people and their land's cause, and to be able to send a message to all the different pilgrims of the Islamic faith from the globe about the Palestinian cause, and get their support to continue resisting the occupied territories and continue their struggle against the brutal Israeli occupation. The Saudi Minister of Islamic Affairs said that the offer comes from the king because the Muslim and Arab Brotherhood support Palestine and its people. Al-Sheikh stressed that the Palestinian people deserve respect and appreciation due to their great sacrifices to preserve Jerusalem and the land of Palestine, which is an Arab Islamic land. The 1,000 chosen Palestinian pilgrims will take the journey by private flights from Jordan and Egypt to Saudi Arabia by Saudi jets that are affiliated with the Saudi Arabian Airlines. We wish our pilgrims a safe and peaceful journey to undertake the ultimate form of worship to Mecca, and we hope they will send a message to our Muslim brothers of the daily injustices the Palestinian people have to go through. These pilgrims are our ambassadors to our brothers in Saudi Arabia and to the rest of Muslims worldwide who will join them in their spiritual journey. The Hajj is a once-in-a-lifetime obligation for those who have the physical, financial and emotional ability to undertake the spiritual journey. Palestinians every year undertake the journey to Mecca as the ultimate goal that every Muslim endlessly strives to reach. Since there are no direct flights into the Saudi Kingdom by Israeli airports, the Palestinian pilgrims in the occupied Palestinian territories make the Hajj journey through a 1,000-mile bus route that goes through the Jordan River to the Saudi desert to reach Mecca and only a few hundreds of them are allowed to travel through the Jordanian Queen Alia's airport. Hey, Baisan for Bahrain Television, Ramallah. 
Chad's government said it is closing Qatar embassy and accused the Gulf country of trying to destabilize the Central African country via neighboring Libya. The foreign ministry said in a statement that Qatar's diplomats have 10 days to leave Chad. The statement also said Chad's embassy in Qatar is closing and its diplomats are leaving. Chad is calling on Qatar to seize all actions that could undermine its security as well as those of the countries of the lake Chad, Basin and Sahel. The Lebanese military command said in a statement that there will not be a ceasefire with the terrorist ISIL group until their full defeat. A Lebanese military source said that the army needs to liberate Mart Martbeya, Siraj Haqabashir and Al Suhat in the barons of Ras Ba'lebek and Al Qa to declare victory over ISIL. The source said yesterday, the fifth day of Operation Baron Zadan, the army was clearing the liberated areas from Mar and made them secure after strengthening the military belt around them. The army had succeeded in previous days in restricting the militants to a small geographic area of about 20 square feet kilometers. ISIL only had the Martbia crossing to withdraw towards Syria. Britain Foreign Minister Boris Johnson met yesterday with the Prime Minister of Libya's United Government, Faye Siraj, to look at ways to, to stabilize the country. Speaking after visiting Libyan Coast Guard, Johnson said that Libya was a front line in the struggle against illegal migration and terrorism. Britain pledged financial support for the rebuilding of critical infrastructure and basic public services, demining training aid for displaced people and women participation in peacemaking. And now we move to Mohammed with the latest business news. Thank you, Sarah. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohammed Youssef. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,302.13 points, marking a decrease of 3.12 points below last closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks, investment and services sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial banks with 60% of total shares. 53 transactions included 1,549,565 shares, worth 431,772 Bahraini dinars. Bahrain non-oil imports reached 433 million Bahraini dinars during the month of July, while the total exports reached almost 190 million. Data showed that total imports of the 10 most important countries amounted 277 million, amounting for 64 percent. China ranked first, reaching 64 million, the UAE came in second with 52 million, and Japan came in third with 28 million. Energy Minister Dr. Abdel Hussein Mirza received Indian Ambassador Alok Kumar Sinha and praised the strong ties between the two countries. He praised the development of the bilateral cooperation and trade and economic integration. The ambassador expressed desire to use solar energy in the new embassy building by installing solar panels on the roof to contribute to generating a percentage of the total electricity used in the building. The minister welcomed the initiative and said the sub sustainable energy unit is ready to provide technical support in this regard. Saudi Energy Minister Khalid Al Falah said Saudi Arabia and China plan to set up a $20 billion investment fund and manage it jointly with cost and profit sharing. He was speaking on the sidelines of an economic conference for senior officials from both countries. He said he expected to add to the fund 11 trade agreements worth about $20 billion. Just beyond the outskirts of Cairo, on a desert road to the Suez Canal, a sprawling industrial zone is coming to life. Egypt's leather industry is leaving behind its ancient tanning quarters in old Islamic Cairo.
for the modern workshops of Robiki Leather City. The new complex is part of a major expansion drive of a sector Egypt considers as one of its important, most important competitors. The trade ministry has set an official target for leather exports to reach over $1 billion a year in 2020 from about $200 million a year currently. In the fiscal year ending in June, Egypt netted $8.7 billion in foreign direct investment and is targeting above $10 billion this year. China will use all necessary means to defend the interest of the country against a U.S. trade investigation. China expressed strong dissatisfaction with the U.S. after accusation regarding theft of U.S. intellectual property, which is the Trump administration's first direct measure against Chinese trade practices. The Ministry of Commerce said it feels sorry that the U.S. has requested a WTO panel set up to investigate Chinese tariff rate quotas for agricultural products. UK's Prime Minister Theresa May said Britain plans to leave the direct jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice and make its own laws when it exits the EU in March 2019. Many pro-Brexit lawmakers and May's governing Conservative Party say the European Court has slowly sucked power from Britain's court and parliament. May wants to use Brexit to strengthen Britain's position outside the EU to negotiate new trade deals. Well, what we've done today is issued a paper which shows a number of ways in which it will be possible to uh, resolve disputes. I think what businesses want to know is that in future relationship, if a dispute arises, how will it be possible to resolve that? We're very clear. We won't have the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice. We will put in place arrangements to ensure that businesses have the confidence of knowing they can continue to trade across the European Union. But what I'm clear about is that we will be ending the jurisdiction of the European European Court of Justice in the United Kingdom. We will be making our laws, Parliament will make our laws, it will be British judges who will interpret those laws and it will be the British Supreme Court that will be the ultimate arbiter of those laws. Oil prices fell today, giving up some recent gains with a stronger dollar that could signal changes to monetary policy. Benchmark Brent crude fell 20 cents at $52.37 and U.S. light crude fell 20 cents at $48.21. U.S. crude oil production hit 9.53 million barrels per day last week, its highest since July 2015. Crude inventories fell by 3.3 million barrels in August, down 13.5% from record levels last March. Walt Disney will use augmented reality to lure Star Wars fans to stores around the world when it releases new toys starting September 1st for upcoming film The Last Jedi. Using augmented reality technology, users can see the characters overlaid on a nearby landscape that they see through a mobile phone camera. Star Wars, one of Disney's most important franchises, was the U.S. toy industry's top-selling property for 2015 and 16, with $1.5 billion in sales over the two years. And finally, before we conclude our business news for this evening, let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading.